I'm Rob Cook. I'm the Director of Business Development with Beverage Seed Company in Muleshoe, Texas. A lot of uh, farming um, practices, a lot of farming systems, biodiversity is, is kind of the enemy. And Mother Nature's continually trying to add the biodiversity back in. And we're continually fighting against it to get it out. So embracing some of that and using some of these new uh, processes, uh, well, they're not new, but maybe reintroducing some of these principles and these processes and actually managing these ecological processes, the nutrient cycle, the water cycle. Using this biodiversity to, to manage it alongside with our cash crops is gonna be vital for us to continue um, in, in this, you know, the Southern Oklahoma for us to have uh, drinking water for our small communities, for us to uh, maintain our family farms on this landscape and keep our small rural communities uh, active and vibrant. Uh, my name is Chris Grotegood. I'm here uh, northeast of Hereford, Texas, and we run a diversified farming and ranching operation consisting of livestock side of sheep and cattle. Uh, we, we, we run usually between, uh, we try to run between three and six hundred cows and between uh, three and seven or eight hundred sheep on this property. Um, what we are, we basically, we've been a, uh, a traditional row crop farm for many, many years. That about 2010, we started this conversion of, we were worried about two resource concerns. One is, uh, was our water table, what was going on with our water table, what could we do to manage within the means of our water table, uh, both um, uh, from a recharge perspective and if it was even viable. If, if we quit pumping or backed off our pumping, would our wells continue to go down uh, because of neighbor, neighboring impacts or what could we, or would it, would it stabilize? So what, the way we've looked at it, our goal now is to hold 90% of the water on the land when it rains. So we don't have it running down the bar ditches. We want 90% of it stay in the field. And we want 10% of it that we know we're not gonna be able to hold to go to the pile lake to go back to the water table to recharge. And so by putting these roots in the ground, uh, whether it's, if we're starting off with, with uh, annual, annual broadleaf weeds out there and, and moving toward grasslands. That's basically the way it goes. You go from bare ground to annual broadleaf weeds to annual grasses to perennial grasses. It's just plant succession is all it is. This is, it's not, it's not something new. It's, it's, it's been going on forever. So farmers have spent billions and billions of dollars in this world develop, uh, to fight um, the process of plant succession. And our, our view today is, let's quit fighting plant succession and try to utilize it to our benefit. The key for Chris Grotegut was the farm's Playa Lakes, the seasonal shallow lakes that form over hard pan soils in much of the semi-arid west. What we did uh, as we went down this path of trying to figure out what we were gonna do, we focused first on our Playa Lakes and, and because that was the easy thing, saying, hey, that's, that's where recharge occurs. And so we started paying attention more to our Playa Lakes and we found out that in the Playa Lakes we need to big roots in them. If it's, if it's been a Playa Lake that had been farmed um, to get it to rehabilitate itself, we needed to let the, the big weeds grow on them and get roots through there to penetrate the clay pan in it and, and uh, open up the porouses that way. And, and when we did that, it improved root water channels moving into the ground. About, about that same time, we were trying to cut our workload and we started putting corner, corners of center pivots, which is about a quarter of the land on our section of land uh, in, into native grasses. And what we learned is that the same concept of, of putting roots into the bottom of Playa Lakes also applied to the, the land around the Playa Lakes and the, even the further extended areas that those roots were critical at moving water into the ground. And, and what it's evolved to for us, uh, you know, we went from quarter, corners of pivots in the grass, now, and then we thought, you know, we're, we're still pumping too much water, let's get rid of a bunch of pivots and back our irrigated acres off. So today we back, on this, this farm's about 11,000 acres, we backed it off to about 25% of the land's irrigated land, okay? Or irrigable land. We got rid of the pivots off the ground. Pivot points are there still. If we want to change the fields around or whatever, just move the pivot. But um, but we quit irrigating 
on the majority of our acres and took it to a dry, dry land basis. And as we did that, we realized that, you know, the grassland in the corner, that's kind of a neat deal. Let's do some whole fields. Let's do some, some larger, larger landscape areas. And as we did that, uh, it did change our workload. It did change our, our um, initially when you do that, it, it, it changes your, it changes so much on your, on your farms, on, on, on the way your farm operates. Um, so you throw, for example, we used to have five or six main tractors we'd run. We had people uh, hired to run those operations. Today we operate, we operate our farm with one 320 horsepower tractor, uh, a, 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 a shredder, a no-till air, a no-till air seeder. We still have a row crop planter that's set up for no-till and we have a grass planter. And we've basically been over time getting rid of equipment because we're no longer doing any tillage on this operation. Grotegood realized that biodiversity was his secret weapon, a wide range of species helping build soil and recharge the water table. Brett Bammert, president of Bammert Seed Company, says his company has been helping farmers like Grotegood build biodiversity since the company's start in 1951. Yeah, you know, I think uh, diversity is key. That's, uh, you know, I think that's been the one consistent since 1950 until today was that we continually, uh, the market demands more and more diversity. And so it started off as one or two species and today uh, blend can be 10 or 15 or 20 different species. The biodiversity in these native grasslands is what allows all, the, all of our nutrient cycles, our energy cycles, and our water cycles to properly function. Um, the biodiversity uh, with the plants on the ground, the biodiversities of the animals and, and the insects and the pollinators utilizing that along with the biodiversity uh, below ground with, with our microbiome below ground allows for our soil to function properly, it allows proper water infiltration, it allows our nutrient cycle to work. You know, in a, a lot of our introduced systems or in a cropping system, we have to have those inputs of, of those nutrients to make that system function. And, and in a native system, we can have the same amount of forage production, the same amount of biomass without those inputs because all of those systems are, are functioning properly. Um, that biodiversity that we see above ground, uh, to, 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 in some people's eyes, this looks messy and this, this looks dirty. Uh, at, from an ecological point of view, from, uh, uh, from my point of view, this is what we want to see. We want to see the heterogeneity. We want to see all the different types of grasses and with different structures, with different growth forms, with different growth curves, because that helps with our biology above ground, but it also helps with the biology, biology below ground. All of these roots look different under the soil also. And all this biodiversity under the soil is our best insurance against drought. Um, these plants and their roots are at different spot, spots in that soil profile. They have different structures. They have different growth curves. So they're taking that moisture and those nutrients from different parts of the soil profile at different times of the year. So there's not as much competition uh, within that area of the soil from a monoculture of whatever crop it is taking the exact same nutrients at the exact same time in the, in the water from that the different part of the soil profile. But using biodiversity to its best advantage isn't just a matter of letting things go and seeing what happens. So one of the important things to having a successful uh, reclamation project, whether it's an ag or, or whether it's on a construction project, is, is picking the right species composition. So you, you want to make sure that you take your soil type and your ecological site into consideration. There's published data out there uh, that, that shows historically what grows in those ecological sites, and that's based off of climatic conditions in the soil type and where they fall in the, you know, at, at, uh, geographically in the geographic uh, geographic area. We like to, um, to to think of ourselves as unique at Bamberg Seed Company because we'll take it a step further. It's not only the correct species, it's, it's the correct variety of each species. So there's different varieties that are more adaptable to different uh, ecological sites or or, or major resource areas across, across our, our area of influence. And so we strive to produce those different varieties of those different species, so we make sure that the correct variety of that species goes in the place where it's most adapted to, to, to have success. So um, you, t you take this site that we're on uh, f 
for example. Um, kind of what, what has naturally grown here is, is blue grama, buffalo grass, a little bit of side oats grama, some sand drop seeds, some other things. But this was, this was probably go back ranch land, meaning it was farmed and uh, I guess it was, it, my guess was probably degraded a little bit. So the right seeds mean that we just can't put out uh, the, the climax species, the ice cream plants, the blue gramas and the buffalo grass and expect those climax uh, grasses to grow on a soil that's not in climax condition. So these other species, this, t this taller grass, I don't know if you can see behind me, is green sprangle top. It's one of those that we use as a nurse crop to help uh, get a growing root in the soil. It'll readily germinate. It'll start and it'll start getting uh, the soil and the conditions right for these other species to come on. And we also want to include some of these lower successional species uh, such as sand drop seed and some others because they do the exact same thing. They're role players on our team. Um, we're, we're not going to win the game without those role players, without those rebounders and those defensive players, and that's what these folk, the, these these grasses are. So we, we ask, get asked a lot, well, why would I want to plant that uh, in, in this blend? That's what I'm trying to move away from. Well, they're playing a role, and we have to have those playing their role for these other uh, ice cream plants or sexier species to, to, to come along and get established. So that's the right seed. So we, we know what grows here and then we have the right proportions of, of what should be here. We have all of those species through that successional uh, framework step work in there to help us be successful. Helping customers, including farmers, ranchers, construction companies, mining operations, and more succeed in their reclamation efforts takes a dedicated and knowledgeable staff. One of our newer salesmen um, was calling me the other day and he said, you know, I kind of feel bad. Um, I got a phone call and somebody wanted to plant a horse pasture and I talked him out of planting it <clears throat> because um, we're out of season. He said, I know we're supposed to be selling seed, you know, and, uh, and, and so I said, Brian, that's exactly what we need to be doing. We have to live with our outcomes and our outcome would not be successful uh, we're not just trying to get seed out the door and we're not just trying to get what we have the most of stacked up in the warehouse out the door. Our conservation story is the right seed at the, you know, at the right time in the right place. That takes a team effort. Brett Bammert says that's what really excites him when he sees Bammert seed mixes out in the field. You know, I, I guess as I drive around and I see the impact that, that the team has made uh, because it's not, it's, it's really all about the team. It takes everybody to accomplish what we do. And so to drive by a field and see everything worked, you know, the production farm, uh, the production guys were able to produce it, uh, keep the weeds out of it, get it harvested correctly. The processing uh, team was able to get it processed. The sales staff uh, was able to consult with that landowner or project manager and ultimately allowed our seed to uh, get out on the landscape, it worked, and uh, here's a good established field of native grass. That's uh, pretty impactful for me to just see all the effort that went into it from beginning to end and where it is today. And so that's, that's what we're here to do.